Talk to us about everything going on in Florida, from power outages, evacuations, storm surge, uh, some of the deadliest effects of a hurricane this size. Let's talk uh, first about these power outages because it really does speak volumes that people are already out of power and this hurricane hasn't even landed on shore yet. Yep, so, uh, you know, obviously the problem with this storm uh, running south to north through the whole state. You know, the maximum radius winds based on this forecast are going to go through a large, a sizable portion of the state. Power is going to be out. And uh, this could be one of the largest power outages the United States has seen in a long time, uh, particularly for those in Florida. We're anticipating millions without power for multiple days, uh, if not longer in some cases. So it's all about setting citizen expectations right now. We're going to do everything that we can, you know, to pre stage uh, and work with our private sector uh, energy partners to be able to get the power on. But um, because of the forecast track here, um, people need to expect and be ready for the power to be off for quite some time. Okay, so the winds obviously causing those power outages with uh, power uh, being knocked down and also trees coming down as well. Uh, we need to talk about the water uh, because water, and I'm talking about this massive storm surge as a result of the outer bands of this hurricane, accounts for nearly 85% of tropical cyclone related deaths. Storm surge and winds are the two biggest killers along the East Coast here. Uh, talk about the, the storm surge being the greatest hazard uh, since water actually kills more people than anything else. Sure. Uh, you said it best. Uh, the wind-driven water uh, encroaching uh, shortly in Monroe County. If the water levels are already coming up around Monroe County and portions of southwest Florida, um, you know, your window to evacuate is running out in southwest Florida. And uh, the bottom line is, is you got to get out of those zones and into a facility that can withstand the winds. And uh, hopefully people are doing that. The other expectation that we got to set is, is that um, because of the logistical nature of being able to access southwest Southwest, you know, Southwest Florida or Southern Florida, um, you know, it's going to take some time before search and rescue crews can get into those in Monroe County uh, and, and some of those portions of, of Florida. So uh, we're asking people to get out if you still can. And there is still time. I mean, the brunt of this is not supposed to hit until tomorrow morning. And there are areas that have been told if you don't evacuate, if the winds exceed 45 miles per hour, emergency crews are not going to come get you. This thing could blow through for 36 hours. Imagine 36 hours being stranded somewhere with no help. I, I want to talk to you about uh, the destructive potential of historic proportions that we are facing without alarming Floridians. At the very same time, we need to talk about reality here. Okay, so Irma, in fact, according to experts have told me, will have Hurricane Charlie's winds potential plus Hurricane Katrina's surge potential from 2005. Nothing like the state of Florida has ever seen before. Do people truly understand the, the magnitude of this storm there? Unfortunately, I don't believe uh, all citizens understand the magnitude of what's about to happen. The eye is coming off the back side of Cuba, the north side of Cuba now, which allows it to give you over warm water. Uh, I think, uh, as forecasters are predicting, it will gain intensity and continue to push water up onto the coast and then move through the state. This is a different angle of attack. This storm, as I said, is moving from south to north through the state. Charlie came in at a different angle, uh, closer to Port Charlotte, and uh, unfortunately, uh, with Irma and the trajectory of coming up the West Coast, storm surge is going to be a problem from basically the Monroe Keys all the way up into Tampa Bay and and uh, around uh, you know the Panhandle in Florida. Right, and and let's just talk about the damage factor according to the Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale. This is how it works, okay? It goes up by a factor of five every time you go up a category. So basically a category four hurricane produces 25 times more damage than a category two. A category three hurricane produces 25 times more damage than a category one. Now, if you look at the way that this storm has sort of gone back and forth around the Florida panhandle uh, as it moves west, just because this hurricane is moving west does not mean that the east coast is not going to be free of this massive storm surge because as you look at these models, the hurricane churns counterclockwise, so it's the wind and the storm surge around it uh, where you are at greatest damage. Now, a lot of these people in Miami, in fact, evacuated up to areas like Tampa and Orlando. I lived in Singer Island, Florida during hurricane season every single single month practically, I ended up in Orlando. What happens to the thousands and thousands of people that headed to Tampa where they are now actually bearing down for potentially the worst uh, 
conditions uh, as a result of Hurricane Irma. So the worst place to be is in the northeast quadrant of this storm that's mm -hmm. moving north. Uh, in the northeast quadrant, that's where the maximum radius winds are that define the storm's intensity. That's where a majority of the uh, storm surge will occur. And if I remember my numbers correctly, 80% uh, of all landfalling hurricanes bring with them tornadoes in that right front quadrant. Uh, but the safest place to be is outside of that storm surge zone and getting into an inland area, um, you know, into a facility that can handle the forecasted winds, not where the storm is currently. But what is forecast? Um, you know what forecasters are projecting for areas like Orlando and Tampa, and uh, you know the one advantage that Florida had was the 2001 building code. So, yes. um, you know after 2001, new construction was supposed to be built to a Category 3 standard, uh, and that's something to keep in mind um, as you're moving inland and trying to find a facility. You don't necessarily have to go hundreds of miles uh, when evacuating to seek safe shelter. So, you know keep that in mind as well. Yeah, what Brock is referring to is after 1992 when Hurricane Andrew, which had come in at a Category 4 storm, came in, it absolutely devastated parts of Florida and the building code had to be changed specifically for the rooftops of a lot of these buildings that are used. Uh, a lot of them have shingles and tiles that weren't properly nailed down. They blew off. People lost the tops of their homes. Um, so, Brock, I mean, it seems as though the buildings are up to code. Uh, let's just hope that people are heeding the warning. So far, it seems like they have. Not all buildings are up to code. Not all. Um, no, new I, construction of course, after not 2001. All. Yeah. So if right, you were right, right. in a building so, before uh, 2001, yep. be sure to not be inside that building when this thing hits. Yep. And pay attention to the forecasted inland winds and impacts as well. But here again, get out of the storm surge zone, get into a facility that can handle the forecasted winds. All right. That's the goal. Uh, your time to evacuate in Monroe County is, is uh, coming to an end. The water levels are coming up. So um, get to high ground as much as possible. All right. Brock Long from NOAA, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'm from FEMA, rather.